you don't mind the family that's where we're family where we're worshiping God in this moment if I can just have a transparent moment that's where we're glorifying the name of Jesus this morning and me and Pastor Brenna we we received a phone call that that Brenna aunt has transitioned and this is a it's one of the ones that you you couldn't prepare for kind of hit you out of nowhere. And to be honest, the reason why I'm sharing is I, I was kind of going back and forth with, with God, should I share? I don't want to make this moment about us. I want you to be the center of God. And here's what God just continued to say. Lift me up, Anthony. Lift me up, Anthony. Lift me up, Anthony. Come on, somebody. We're with a, a heavy heart and all. I don't know who or what you may be going through right now, maybe maybe your heart is heavy. Maybe you have some pain. Maybe there's a, a little bit of frustration, disappointment. Come on, we all can be there, amen? Come on, this is a family moment right now. And here's what the Holy Spirit will whisper in moments like that. Lift up the name of Jesus. Because everything that what you're going through right now is found, the very thing that you need will always be found in the name of Jesus. It's moments where we can easily begin to seek out other opportunities to find the very thing that we need. In a place where your heart is broken, your mind can tell you to go seek out something else. But I'm here to remind you today, right where you are right now, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, is there anybody in here with me? Is there anybody in here with me that don't mind lifting up the name of Jesus? Because why? Jesus, your name is greater. Jesus, your name is still powerful. Jesus, your word, you said it, Jesus. All who are weary, all who are labor, come to me and you will find rest. Is there anybody in here who's looking for a little bit of rest? Just to rest in the name of your father. Just to rest right in his presence. Why? Because the very thing that you need is found in the bosom of your father. Rest in his presence. Rest in his presence. Why? Because you need to learn how to rest. The best way, hear my heart on this, the best way to rest is to lift up. If you need rest, lift up. If you need rest, lift up. Don't, don't lift anything else. If you're looking for a little bit, you're tired of pivoting. You don't have, you don't know which way to go. I'm here to just to encourage you as a pastor, but as a friend and as your brother, lift up the name of Jesus. Don't stop lifting up the name of Jesus. I don't care what the enemy may throw your way. What you always going to do, come on somebody, what your family is always going to do is lift up the name of Jesus because he's always been on your side. He's always comforting you. He always, he is the way maker. He will turn the quickest break. He will break through the wall. He will see you break down over the walls of Jericho. You will cross that red sea. Why? Because he's always with you. He is the comforter. He is the great peace. He is the way maker. Lift up the name Jesus. Come on, just release his name in this place right now. Come on, just begin to shake the walls right now. Come on, somebody. Shake the walls for yourself. Shake the walls for your family. Shake the walls for your neighbor. Shake the walls for your sons, for your daughters. Somebody is counting on you to lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus. Glorify the name of Jesus. I wanted to read Psalms 139. I love it how it says this family, right before we transition into the word. Psalms 139, 17, somebody needs to hear this. Here's what your father is whispering to you today. God, how precious your thoughts are to me. How vast their sum is. 
if I counted them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake up, I am still with you. The thoughts that God has towards you will always be marvelous. The thoughts that God has for your destiny is always marvelous. See, this is why I have to be reminded, family, despite what reality may show me through my eyes, my father thoughts towards you and I is pulling you in a place that you may not be able to perceive right now. But understand this, his thoughts are high. His thoughts are marvelous. His thoughts are glorious. The thoughts that he has towards you, if we can begin to just think about ourselves just as God thinks about us, but the only way to do that, you have to make sure that you lift up him because if you lift up him and you glorify him, your thoughts will be on heaven thoughts. Your thoughts won't live on an earth thoughts because earth may be saying one thing, but your king is saying something Hallelujah. else. So if we lift up the name of Jesus, Thank we will begin to speak as Hallelujah. our king speaks. We will begin to see as our king sees, we will begin to think as our king thinks. My thoughts are high today. Come on, somebody. When your thoughts move from a place of earthly and transform to the place of heavenly, your thoughts become peace. Your thoughts become powerful. We serve the creator. So hear my heart on today. What your eyes may not see right now, hear me today. Your creator is creating some things right now. And the creator doesn't stop creating. And the creator is still moving. He's still with the breath of a stroke. He's still speaking. Just because you may not see it right now, peace is on the way because your heavenly father is still speaking. Your heavenly father is still creating. So whatever you may need right now, in this moment right now, lift up the name of Jesus because your creator is still creating. He's a, he's a creator. If we can find ourselves in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Amen. You guys feel good? Amen. 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 Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5 and 6. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. We have two, two scriptures, so I'm not going to have you stand alone. But I love this, I love this word, I love this scripture. On chapter five, me on verse uh, five, it reads this family. <clears throat> the fool folds his hands together and consumes his own flesh, destroying himself by idleness and apathy. One hand full of rest and patience is better than two fists full of labor and chasing after the wind. If I can, if I can preach this subject today, fam, now, matter of fact, I, I was going to call it Dawn with the wind, but I thought that was a little corny. Uh, but I want to preach this message, family. I want to I wanna talk a little bit for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, as we're transitioning into a summer season, here's what God is telling me, and I want to ask Pastor and you in this moment as we transition into the summer season. Hear my heart today. And hear, the, hear the message title. Pack light. Pack light. Pack light. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We glorify your name in here. Your presence is with us. Matter of fact, your presence was already here. We met you when you came, when we walked through the door, you were already here. We glorify your name. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you that he has paved the way that we now can have an eternal relationship with you. It's through your word, even in moments like right now, we're drawn closer to you. 
getting better. We're getting stronger. Our faith is increasing. So even right now, we thank you for your word that goes forth. As it goes in, it divides, it separates. Through that separation, let it bring us closer to you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. You can have your seats. Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss all of our C kids, middle school and high school. Your, your incredible leaders are over there. Pack light, pack light. Somebody say pack light. If I could be honest with you, family, um, I remember having a conversation, a matter of fact, around this time last year uh, with my uh, uh, friend of mine who had a destination wedding. Come on, anybody love destination weddings? Come on. Who wouldn't mind had been on at a wedding? Come on, the beautiful white sand, uh, the ocean view in your backdrop. There's something beautiful about a destination wedding. And I remember having this conversation with this, gen, uh, this um, <clears throat> excuse me, individual and I remember we was talking about, he was telling me about, about how he's such a light packer. That he, come on, he's just like me, Leah. When I pack, I pack light. Come on, come on. I, I love to pack light, but to be honest, I'm kind of, no, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I don't think that's actually true, Leah. To be honest, I, I, I think the Holy Spirit is convicting me. Yeah, it's convicting me. I try. <laughs> I try to pack light. But I, if I, when it comes to, I'm, I'm, I just want to be, I remember Marquis said it, when Marquis said, he said, he said, Pastor Anthony, you just love options. I love options when it comes to packing. I want to make sure if, if, if we're going out, I want to be, I want to have an outfit if we're going out. If I need to dress light, I, I, need, I, need, I just need options. I don't want to be in a place and I don't fit the occasion, right? Anybody with me? So, so, so now that my, 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 my personal, my curry on is, is right at the edge. I mean, I'm the, the, the flight attendant is looking at me. Come on. You know this is probably not going to fit, Mr. Vaughn. I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of packer. But I remember he was telling me, he was like, hey, Pastor Ant, hey, you know what? I mean, we, me and my fiance, we pack light. We got one curry on. We got the one person in the bag. We, we are light packers. I'm, I'm so glad that my wife, my fiance now, his wife is just like he was excited. And we're going through what we're talking about. it. And he was telling me the story. But then he said, you know what? You know what, Anthony? I, I put all of my energy into planning on getting over there, having the wedding, having the reception. And then he, they, they failed to actually think about all of the items that they purchased for the reception. They shipped it over there to the island. But they didn't plan for all of those items to actually come back home with them. So they won, here in this family, their one personal item, their one personal carry-on item, that one suitcase turned into 17 suitcases flying on the way back from Jamaica back to the USA. By the fact, they was assigning family members, hey, you take two or three a suitcase, and then you take two or three, because they failed to plan for the season they, they were entering into. They were only planning to get there, but they wasn't planning to get back home. See, I wrote this in my notes, family, and the reason why I'm telling you this, family, because here's what the Holy Spirit is whispering to me. He said, failure to plan when entering one season can lead you to coming out of that season heavier than you walked in. Yeah. See, this is why I want you to be very careful. Somebody just say this. Say no to extra baggage. Yeah. Say no to extra baggage in this season. Him being a pastor for, for, for over 10 years now. And here's my heart. Here's my heart because a lot of times I love the summer season. My birthday's in the summer. I'm a summer baby. I love vacationing. I love going to the beach. But what I find out a lot of times if we don't execute or plan properly heading into the summer season, our rhythms and our routines can actually get off track. So now when August and September comes back, we're trying to get our rhythms back in order. We're trying to get everything back in order. And for a lot of us, we fail to even recuperate or get back on track. And we just wait to January. I'll wait to the church fast and I'll get back there. Because we, 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 we break from a lot of things, but then we break from the very thing that's most important to our life. And that's our relationship with God. So hear my heart on today as we dive a little bit deeper because, yes, vacation, yes, have fun, yes, do do all of those amazing things that are good. But hear my heart on this. Don't break from God. 
Find rest, but don't rest from God. Find the very thing that you need. Find enjoyment, but don't break from the very thing that is keeping you grounded in this season. The very thing that's keeping you win so that you can win in this season. It is found in your foundation with Jesus Christ. Break from a whole lot of stuff, but please don't break from God. Say yes to the very things that you need to say yes to this. Say yes to being committed to God through the summer season. Say yes to still coming to church. Come on, somebody. We'll be here. Say yes to being committed. Why? Because if you're looking, here it is. God is setting you up for something. Don't delay because you break away from the very thing that God has called you to. He's preparing you for better. He's setting you up for more. He's setting you in a position so that you and your family can receive greater. But I found out moments in my life in the past that I will miss the opportunity where what God is setting up for me because I decided to break from God during the summer season. So hear my heart today. Pack light. Pack light. Pack light going into the season. Pack light because here it is. Don't get caught chasing the wind this summer season. Don't get caught chasing the wind. What W-I-N-D, wind. What's the wind? What's the very thing that's, that's blowing in your life that's, that can be enticing to your eyes, but it's getting you off the mark that God has called you to? The enemy will love to blow winds in your life. I, I remember having a dog, Diamond, uh, uh, a dome. I remember having this dog, and every time the wind blew, she just ran with the wind. Don't allow the winds of life to get you off the track that God has called you to. That God is ordering your steps. He's positioning your steps. In order to stay connected and grounded in God, we have to learn how to find rest and patience. Find rest and patience. Here's what Solomon said. I'm going to unpack this a little bit more. Verse 6, he said it this way. He said, one hand full of rest and patience It's better than two fists full of labor and chasing after the wind. See, see, in other words, Solomon is saying this. He's saying it's better. Hit him, our family. It's better to live a life with the word of God in your hand. This is the posture that God is calling us to. He's not calling us to a posture of living a life with our fists closed, but rather with our hands open. Because if I have my palms open, God can pour into it. If I have my palms open, God can build onto it. But here's what I found out, and even in my own life, is why you wondering why I have all of these skittles up here in this glass bowl. Because a lot of times, here's what I can easily find myself doing, is that those skittles look very enticing to my eyes. They're very colorful. They're beautiful. Matter of fact, they will go perfectly on my st- my nightstand around midnight at nighttime. It's enticing to my eyes. But a lot of times in order to grab that, I have to let loose of this. So here's what Father is teaching us is, is that we're putting this down in order to grab this. So now we have a bunch of stuff in our hands. We just have a bunch of stuff in our hands. And here's what Solomon is. I can't hold the word of God and hold stuff. I can't live a life of making sure I want more. So we go after one more. We go after one more vacation. We go after one more car. We go after one more. What's the one more thing that's in your life? One more outfit. One more pair of shoes. Come on, somebody. Just just one more. The enemy would love to get you very greedy of going after one more. But to, in order to grab one more, you have to let loose of the very thing that means the most to you. Don't let loose of this in order to grab this. We don't want to have stuff in our life. So what's the stuff in your life? Here's why we're teaching it, Pack Light. Living a life with the word of God in our life teaches us how to pack light. It keeps us away from the extra baggage that can come in our life. If you fly on a plane, come on, somebody, extra baggage can get very expensive. It can cost you more. 
the more you begin to pack, you're going to have to pay for it. Mr. Vaughn, that's going to cost you. Uh, we told you one curry on item, but the additional that you're bringing on the trip is actually going to cost you. And here's what I'm preaching right now for you. This is preventive maintenance. Some PM. Come on, somebody. This is some PM work right here. This is before you go into your summer season, plan, process, begin to prepare, but prepare by packing light. If there's anything I want to be heavy in this season, it's the word of God. If there's anything that, that I want to be heavier in this season, it's God's presence. Come on, somebody. Hey, if somebody say, hey, you gained a little weight, say it's the presence of God. Come on, somebody. That ain't, that ain't the winter fluff. That's the presence of God. Come on, somebody. Yes. If I want to be heavier, I want to get heavier in his word. If I don't want to make sure I'm breaking and now I'm losing weight, but I'm losing weight because I'm losing his presence. I want to get heavier in my mind. I want to get heavier in my faith. I don't want to make sure I'm not getting extra baggage. I want to make sure that I'm getting extra of his presence. Why? Because God has us on a plan. God has you on what he's setting you up for. His word says this family that he orders your steps. And I, we want to make sure, come on celebration. We want to make sure that every step that he has put in front of us, we're walking in the right direction. But we, when, we, when we fail to break and we break away from things, that's great. But when we begin to break away from God, now we are delaying the very thing that God wants to do in our life. Make sure, excuse me, make sure that you're packing light. Because I, I said it this way in my notes. See, an open palm means I have joy. See, don't, 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 don't close the palm to grab more of this. An open palm towards God means I have love. Don't close the word of God so that you can grab more of this. An open palm means God teaches me how to have better patience. See, see, if I close the word of God, now I begin to grab more stuff. What's the stuff that can be in your life? Don't close your, don't close your palms. Leave your palms open towards God. Here's the posture that God is calling you to this summer season. Not a season to a season of going after more, just grabbing more. We're like, like Princeton when he goes into the pantry. He just comes out with everything, just in his hands. Fist closed. That's what, that's, what, that's what the Bible is teaching us right now. The best posture that you can give God in this season, family, is this posture. Not a posture of my fist closed and this belongs to me because I work for it. I deserve it. I want it. And now we grab hold of it. And now we begin to say it's mine and we pull it close to us just like the six year old Princeton does. But hear my heart on today. God can't bless you with more with closed fists. God can only build on to what you have in your life if it's open towards God. Close fists say no to this season. Close fists leads to extra baggage. Open palms leads more from what God wants to do in your life. Live a life. So I, I, I want to set it up this way. I got you. I got you, family. Three keys to packing light this season. If you're taking notes, three keys to packing light this summer season to avoid extra baggage. This summer, hit my heart on, hit my heart on today. Chase God, not greed. Chase God, not greed. Greediness will always lead to debt. E-E-B-T, debt. Being greedy will always lead to that. Here's what Jesus said in Luke 12, 15. He said, then he said, beware, God against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. He said it again. Jesus said, Be, beware, God against every kind of greed, every kind of greed. Every kind of greed leads to destruction. Vision will always lead to the fruit that God wants in your life. Greediness will always lead to destruction. Being greedy can lead to debt financial-wise. Financial 
Being greedy can lead to debt relationship wise. Being greedy can lead to now I'm in debt um, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Chasing more and being greedy can lead to us trying to create a lifestyle that God has not called us to. If I can say it this way and hear, hear my heart on this way, they love to say now, act your wage. Act your wage. Here's what your wage is. Your wage is found in Christ. Do not try to allow greediness to create a lifestyle that God did not call you to. Because now you're living in frustration because you're trying to create a lifestyle of maybe just trying to keep up with the Joneses, but God has called you to live a lifestyle that he has ordained for your life and only in order to find true joy and true happiness in that, we can't trace, chase the greediness of our eyes. We have to make sure we're seeking God for our steps because those steps will lead to the very thing that he has called us to. See, you ever been at, you ever been in a season in your life, or maybe somebody else said this? I just got greedy. Oh, I, I just got I regret it because I got greedy. See, see, no regrets coming out of this summer season. No, no regrets of saying, you know what? I got greedy, and normally when you're greedy, you're eventually going to have a decision that you're going to regret because greediness does not teach you patience and rest. Greediness teaches you, I have to have it now, right now. This is what the society, this is what ambition, this is what the world, this is what the culture is teaching us, that being greedy, you got to get it now. But being patient and resting in God shows you how to make a proper decision. This is what the word of God is teaching us. This is why the word of God is saying, hey, hey, it's better, one hand, One hand, to be open, palms open towards God. That's where you will find rest. See, not not two-fifths of chasing something, because if you continue to chase it, it will continue to wear you down. If you continue to chase it, you will continue to deplete yourself with joy. If you continue to chase it, you will continue to be frustrated. But being patient and resting with God allows the Holy Spirit to guide you and show you and ordain and appoint the the, the footsteps that's in your life. Maybe sometimes where I can't see my next steps is because I'm greedy. Maybe I can't see the next door because I'm greedy. This is why Matthew 6.33 says this, seek Seek him and his ways, his righteousness. Seek him first. Find rest in him first because everything is getting ready to be added towards you. But you got to have some patience and some posture to make sure you spend some time seeking him. Seek him and the very thing that what God has for your life will begin to flow in your life. I wrote this down in my notes. Allow vision to lead you, not greed. Allow vision this summer season to lead you, not greed. Don't get, I I said, don't get caught being greedy this summer. Don't get caught. Have fun. If you have have that leisure in your life, go have fun. Go enjoy life. Don't get greedy. Don't get greedy. That that credit card, come on, somebody, don't get greedy. Hit my heart heart on today. Don't be, be very careful. Plan, process. And, and act according to your wage. Why? Because your destiny means so much to you. The calling that God has called on your life, the timing of it is so much bigger than just you and your family. Every decision that you're making can eventually affect you and somebody else. This is why we have to make sure that we're being seeking God and going after the very things that he has called us to. Number two, I say this, this summer season, Stay off the devil's playground. Stay off the devil's playground. God rest my, my grandmother's soul. She used, to, she, loved, she used to say this all the time. Idleness is the devil's playground. Hey, find rest. God has called us to rest. God has called us to break away from some stuff, but God has never called us to idleness. Even in your resting, that's still an action word. Vision is an action word. Resting is an action word. Patience is an action word. 
God has called you to always move in action. So even when you're finding rest and breaking in this season, you're still planning and processing and, and also preparing for what God is getting ready to do in your life. Do not allow this summer season to become a season of just idleness. Just become a season of idleness. Matter of fact, Proverbs 13 and 4 says it this way, family. It says, the soul of a slugger craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. The sluggard, sluggard lifestyle, the sloth, just, just, just no vision. Hear, hear my heart. No vision or vision less will always lead to nothing. But God is calling us to always move with vision in our life. What's the vision for your summer season? For every season that's in your life should have vision. Every season in your life, you're planning, you're processing, even when you're, what the word is saying, finding rest and being patient, that is also vision. What is the very thing that you need to break from in this season, this summer season? What are some things that you actually need to take a step back so that you can see more, so that you can plan more, so that you can actually surge in this summer season and not have a summer slump? God, is, God does not call us to have no any type of slump. God has called us to actually have a bump. So I'm even speaking this word over this house even right now that this will be a summer of a bump. That God is bumping you into the very thing that he has called you to. How does God do that? We remain rest and patience in his presence. When we rest in his presence, the vision that we need for the next quarter will come. When you find rest and patience of everything that you've been waiting on, that, that connection or that network or that very idea of what you're looking for God to do, maybe you need to get back right in. Maybe that's not breaking from something, that's stepping into something. And the more that you step into something, more vision will come. Stay off the devil's playground. Don't, 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 don't play on this playground this, this year. Why? Because the, the purpose that God has given you is so great. That, he, that he's filled you up with so much more, each and every one that I'm looking at right now, and my online family as well, that God has given us so much purpose and so much calling that I cannot make sure, I got to make sure I can't take a day and play on nobody's playground. Yes. It means too much to God, not me, to God. God doesn't want me to play on the playground. Why? Because what he released me is valuable to him. If it's valuable to him and he released it to you, it should be valuable to you as well. Steward the very thing that God has given you so that you can actually hear this. Prepare for better. Prepare for better. If I can say it this way, I love this quote. It says, the poorest man in the world is the man without a dream. The most frustrated man in the world is the man with a dream that never became a reality. The reason why I believe sometimes our dreams don't become reality is because we fail to pack light in the proper seasons. The dreams cannot become the reality because we're carrying too much baggage. We're, 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 sometimes and we're allowing the extra baggage to come in our lives. The extra baggage of I, I, I want this. The extra baggage that it can only happen if I do it this way. The extra baggage of preferences. The extra baggage of being just in my comfort zone. The extra bag. What's the extra baggage in your life right now? Here it is that you have control over. I'm not talking about the extra baggage. Life happens. There's stuff that we can't control. But for the things that we can control this summer season, God, I'm saying, God, show me where I'm getting ready to make a false step and bring extra baggage in my life. Because why, God, I don't want to fail because I can see and hear what you're getting ready to do in the third and fourth quarter season of this year. And if I make a false step, is that going to ruin the timing, God? So, God, I want to draw close to you because I know my wife is dependent on it. I want to draw close to you because I know my sons are dependent on it. 
In my heart today, I want to draw close to, closer to God because I know my church wants a pastor who's actually not bringing extra baggage in their life. And that's the same thing for you and I that make sure the vision and the calling that God has called you to, that you're not bringing extra baggage because extra baggage can wear you down. And once it wears you down, it gets you off the timing of what God wants to do in your life. But if we stay in the right place and we stay connected to God, find rest, find patience, find love and God. I will draw you on the timing of what God is getting ready to release in your life. Amen. Patience and rest is vital to the timing of what God wants to release in your life. If I can begin to close it, I'm going to invite you back up, Marquise. The last one is this. Number three, if you're taking notes. The summer season, here it is. Entanglement is weighty. Now talking about Will and Jada. All right. Entanglement is weighty to pack light. Entanglement is weighty. Second Timothy two and four says this. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself. See, see, your destiny cannot afford for you to get involved in entanglements this summer. See, entanglements can be weighty. Entanglements, hey, hey, here's what Paul is saying to Timothy. Hey, hey, no, you, you can't afford to get entangled with the affairs of this world. Why? Because if you, if you, if you get entangled by that, you cannot please the one who actually called you. So what Paul is saying here, the one that's, that's called you, you have an audience of one. Each day that you wake up, you have an audience of one. Who's that audience? God. You're, every day that you wake up, you make sure that you're living a life of pleasing the audience of one. So God, we spend time with God. I want to make sure we're pleasing God. It is impossible. This is what Paul is teaching here. You can't please the one that called you if you're entangled with the affairs of this life. Stay entanglement free this summer. See, I, I, I said this, enjoy your summer. Plan for fun. Matter of fact, plan for rest. I hear my heart. Plan for growth. Yeah. While, you're, while you're breaking, plan for that. While you're resting, plan for that. But spend some time this summer season planning for gro growth. Because what God has called you to, he's calling you to better. Better. Somebody say that with me, better. Better. Come on, say it again, better. All through the book of Ecclesiastes, if you study the poetry here, I, I, love, I love the penmanship here that you can always see, always releasing better. Better. Better is this than that. Better is this than, than that way. Better, just better, 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 better. And as I was reading more through it, here's what I believe the Holy Spirit was even whispering to me, and I'm going to say it to you, that better is on its way because you prepare for better. You can receive better in your life when we prepare for better. How are you preparing for better this summer season? How, how your family is preparing for better for what God is getting ready to do in your life? How are you positioning yourself not to just rest and take a break, but to actually press in more, to lean in more in this season? Why? Because, God, everything that I need, I want to make sure that it's coming from you. See, I said it this way. I have better because I did not chase greed. I have better because I refuse to play on the devil's playground. Come on, speak that over your prophetic life right now. I have better because I choose to pack light. Pack light this summer season. Pack light this summer season. We can stand to our feet. Pack light this summer season. The more light you pack, the more you can run with the wind that God has called you to. Let's not chase the wrong wind this summer season. Let's actually chase the wind of God. Let's seek after him. Let's lean in more. Why? Because better is on the way. 
that is present right now. And as I get ready to close out, here's one thing I want to challenge us all. As I was just preparing a sermon, and I just kind of felt even the Holy Spirit say, even this summer season, I want you to pick something new. Try something new this summer season. Don't just break away from something, break into something. Legally, I'm going to clear that up. Don't, don't, you know, I don't want to be on YouTube. You know, pastor said, you told me to break into it. No, no, I didn't. Don't just break away from something in my heart. Break into something. Break into something new. Maybe God's been calling you to write. Break into that. Break away from a bad habit. Break into a good habit. Don't pick up more bad habits. We all got some bad habits in here. Me included. I don't want to pick up more baggage of bad habits. I want to break free from those and break into something new. What's the one thing that you can you can start new this summer season? Matter of fact, I'm gonna challenge us, challenge us all, even our online family. If you're here next week, come come visit me. I gotta check with Pastor Brenda first, make sure she's good with it. No. But I it's something God dropped in my spirit this week. Matter of fact, two things. Say this summer season, never did it before, go do it. Go break free from that so that you can break free to this. See, I can't break free into this if I'm still holding all of this. I can't break free into something new if I'm still holding a whole lot of stuff. See, a lot of us, we're, we have this stuff. And, and, and we, don't, we, won't, we won't break free into something else because we, we're, we're, we're cherishing the stuff. We, 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 we can't step into something new. We can't step into something greater. We can't step into something more from him. Why? Because we're, we're protecting the stuff. And God is saying in this season, put the stuff down and pick me up so that you can step into something greater. I believe this for you. I want to pray for you as we get ready to close out. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. And I believe that's a prayer for all of us. That in this season, Heavenly Father, that even prophetic speaking, even over this church, that this will be a season of a surge. That we believe that the ground that we're standing on, by the end of the summer season, we would have experienced more. More of your presence, more of your love, more of the vision and the why of what you called us to. We lean into you. We don't lean away from you. So Heavenly Father, teach us as your sons and your daughters, teach us how to lean in more. Teach us how to worship you more. Teach us how to glorify your name more. Because when your word says, when we lift up the name of Jesus, all things will be drawn unto you. So whatever needs to be drawn unto you, teach us how to lift you up right now. We break free from bad habits. We break free from extra baggage. We break free from the things that are entangling us and weighing us down and destroying our joy and depleting our, our, our peace and, say, and removing our comfort. We break free from those things and we press into the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your power. Thank you for your dominion. We thank you for your authority that's over us in this season. We choose better. We choose better in this season of our life. We choose better in this season for our family. We choose better in this season for our marriage. We choose better in this season for our kids. We, we choose better in this season over our workplace, over our careers, over our neighborhoods, our schools, our government, everything, Lord God, we choose better. We choose better, better is found in you. Let us press in this season. Show us how to press in. And as all heads are still bowed, eyes are closed, as we 
don't want to move from this moment, maybe, maybe better is speaking to you right now about a better relationship with Jesus Christ. In my heart, in order to receive better, we have to be connected to who is better. And better is Jesus Christ. So maybe God is speaking to you right now. And maybe God is saying that, hey, I'm, I'm calling you back home. Choose better. A better relationship. Maybe you never, maybe you never gave Jesus your yes. Or maybe God is saying, hey, it's time to rededicate. If that's you, all, all heads are still bowed, all eyes are closed. Just, just lift up your, your hand in here. As a family, I would just want to walk us through this prayer of salvation. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak, speak to you right now. But just repeat after me. Come on, family. We're going to say this together. We're going to join in as a community. Just repeat this. Jesus Christ, I love you. I am a sinner. I repent. I confess. And I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for me. You died for me, but you rose on the third day. You are seated in heaven. You are my Lord and Savior. Come on, family, let's put our hands together. Come on, celebrate that. Come on, if you just made that decision, come on, we celebrate you today. If you're online, we celebrate you today. If you can just fill out what we call our connect card, well, we have an amazing team that will connect with you. If you're here in person, take some time, swing by our connect station. If you're online, just click on the connect description box, the connect card. We would love to connect with you, pray with you, and you know our heart. You are family. Come on. He never stops. He never stops working, and he is our way maker. And that's why at this very special time of our service, we get to show him how much we trust that he's our way maker, that he's our provider, that he will open the doors that we need by blessing us to be a blessing to others. He's a way maker for other people because he pours into us so that we can freely give and pour out to others so that they can experience the way maker in their life. As we bring our tithes and our offerings today, let us remember what Pastor Anthony said. We, we have an open hand to receive from God so that we can also release that we can be a blessing to other people. Our ushers will pass around a bucket for those of us in the sanctuary and those who are online. Uh, you can click the give button. Uh, you can use the app and you can text and you know, it says, uh, where our treasure is, our heart is also, right? We leave, we don't bring our, our tithes and offerings to lay up treasures here on earth, but to do kingdom work so that our heart, our heart is there with God in agreement, a partner here on the earth so that he can be a way maker in the lives of others. So we give with gladness and joy today. And we are grateful that when we give, he is faithful to pour back into us. So let us pray over the blessing of being able to give offering and tithes today. Father God, thank you for being a way maker. Thank you for being a provider. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you pour richly into us and you open the windows of heaven that you could pour out blessings so that we can on this earth represent your character, your love. Be the hands and the feet to be blessings to others, to do what you've called us to do, to take care of the widow and the orphan, the fatherless. Thank you, Father God, for the blessing of our offerings, our tithes. Bless the giver, bless the gift. Go, grow, multiply. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we get another round of applause and cheers for today? I don't know about you guys, but what is that called when uh, you get a Tony and Academy and a Grammy all in one? Like that was Jesus today, right? Like that was he, like I was crying, Marquis was playing, you know, and it was just so powerful. So I have just... I'm overwhelmed. But uh, to speak on that creative note, uh, we're really, really excited to be expanding our teams. And so we're calling all creative uh, men and women to um, a very special night um, for worship, photography, you know, whatever that thing is for you. We want, we want to, we want 
you a part of our team, okay? So uh, it's an incredible way to find community with other fellow creatives of all ages, backgrounds, levels of experience. I'm operations, we're operations. You will not find us at that meeting, um, but we'll run the country if you need us to. Uh, yeah, come on out. <laughs> if you're interested, uh, please visit the Connect station either outside or right outside. Grab a Connect card from the usher. Go ahead and fill that out and just indicate what that area is for you. And then somebody from the church and our team will connect. Um, Y'all have gifts, so let's all work together and showcase that. And if it's something outside of creative and you're ops like me and you can have a plan in five seconds like Leah and I, let us know. There's a place for you here. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) With that said, (laughs) let's pack light, church. Let's pack light. Um, Let us pray out. Father God, bless us abundantly indeed. Enlarge our territories, Father God. Keep us far from the evil one that we would not experience trouble or pain. And we thank you that your word said that it is so. We will pack light, Lord God, and we will go and win this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.